I love it when women finally start repeating what I've been saying for years and other men before me. I regret being a slut. This article is a fucking gold mine. Upon opening Louise Perry's new book, The Case Against the Sexual Revolution, and you got to sex in the 21st century, I'm moved to tears by the dedication. For the women's who learned it the hard way. And remember, every one of these women who learned it the hard way had men like us in their lives telling them not to do this, but they knew better. Even better, these older women right now who, who are like writing articles like this, they had older women while they were younger telling them the same thing, but they knew better. And right now, they are trying to tell younger women this isn't the way. And those younger women are looking at them going, fuck you, grandma. What do you know about me? I know more than you. Unlike many other people who have read and reviewed Perry's work, reading her book wouldn't come uh, as some wouldn't be some academic exercise in contemplating how liberal feminism has let women's down. It wouldn't even be uh, evaluating what those poor sluts over there have endured in the wake of the sexual revolution. Reading her book was personal. I am one of those sluts. At least she has self-awareness. I'll give her that much. Well, now anyway, she didn't in the past. I am a case study for her thesis, a cautionary tale. I knew this book was going to be difficult. It made me realize it's time to finish this essay, one I've been trying to write for four years. It's a tough needle to thread. I'm grateful for the ability to control my reproductive cycle and make my own money, but that freedom has come at a price. You guys ready for it? You ready for the talking point I've been saying for years that Granny just finally figured out? The dark side of the sexual revolution is that even though it liberated women's, unyoking sex from consequences has primarily benefited men. Oh shit, they're on to us, guys. They're figuring it out. Quick, empower them some more. Give them some more empowerment. DEFCON RED. Holy shit, this is dangerous. I was first inspired to write this piece when a 19-year-old Whammons I used to wait tables with asked me, like, Bridget, have you ever regretted having sex with a man? I laughed. Yeah, all of them. I, I bet you all you laughed about pound me tooing all of them because you regretted it afterwards too, right? It's not entirely true. There was my first love in high school, my first husband. Wow. How how, how many have there been since? But if I'm honest with myself, the dozens of men I've uh, been with, uh, at least the ones I remember, I can only think of a handful I don't regret. The rest I would put in the category of casual, which I would define as sex that is either meaningless or mediocre or both. If I get really honest with myself, I'd say most of those usually drunken encounters left me feeling empty and demoralized and worthless. And uh, feeling the need to, to retroactively withdraw consent, because that usually happens. I wouldn't have said that at the time, though. At the time, I would have told you I was liberated, even while I tried to drink away the sick feeling of rejection when my most recent hookup didn't call me back. At the time, I would have said one night stands made me feel emboldened. But in reality, I, I was using sex like a drug, trying to unsuccessfully to fill a hole inside me with men, pun intended. I know regretting most of my sexual encounters is not something sex-positive feminazi used to write a, a column for Playboy is supposed to admit. Mm hmm. And for years, uh, I didn't. Let me be clear, being a slut and sleeping with a lot of men is not the only behavior I regret. Even more damaging was uh, what I told myself in order to justify the fact I was disposable to those men. I told myself I didn't care. And she legitimately didn't until the wall reared its ugly head. I didn't care when a man ghosted me. I didn't care when he left in the middle of a night or uh, hinted he wanted me to leave. The walks of shame, the blackouts, the anxiety... The lie I told myself for decades was, I'm not in pain, I'm empowered. Well, now, to be fair, that's that part's not a lie. Any man could have told you that. It's like, do you think it's easy? Like, no, go, going, uh, the working for soulless, like soul crushing, often physically exhausting work. You, you, you think men do that shit for fun? You think men put themselves in all that pain and misery? 
to support women's for fun? No, that's what empowerment is. You wanted the male privilege of working yourself into an early grave for a soulless corporation. This is empowerment. Now, looking back, uh, it isn't a surprise I lied to myself because from a young age, sex was something I was lied to about. No, so no, no fucking excuses, okay? There were plenty of people who were also telling you the truth that you blatantly blew off because you knew better. I do not want to hear this fucking excuse. I was lied to. How was I supposed to know? Well, we, we have reams of evidence of you also being told the opposite, and you called those guys incels and told them to shut the fuck up and leave. No sympathy. Long before I ever had sex, I felt ashamed of my natural sexual urges and awkward in my blossoming female body. Growing up Catholic, I remember what sex was feeling bad uh, about sex, was feeling bad about it before I even knew what it was. I only knew that sex before marriage was wrong, even though the uh, sexual act or masturbation filled me with de debilitating guilt. Or even the sorry, even the thought of a sexual act or masturbation filled me with debilitating guilt. Oh, so she might be one of those uh, preacher's daughter types, if you know what I mean. The first time I kissed a boy, I was convinced I'd be punished, struck down by an angry, misogynistic God. As I got older, I was told to guard my virginity, a well-meaning... See, see, look, she, she, she was told right, and she ignored it. Well-meaning mothers and aunts were clear that I needed to withhold sex in order to get a man to love and respect me. And what part of this was you being lied to? You know, sex was a commodity, a priceless gem I had to hang on to uh, that, that increased in value the longer I held it, up until you hit the wall. It made me feel like property. Although, see, look right here. So, so th th this is why I have no fucking sympathy. She was being given the correct advice. And she's like, no, nah, this made me feel bad. This was what I was being lied to about. Okay. Okay. And although I don't think that was the intention of the wise women who had learned their own lessons the hard way, for me, sex became in intrinsically linked to my self-worth. The shame and guilt I grew up with regarding sex felt oppressive. I resented the double standard that men could be promiscuous, but it would uh, and it would raise their status. And the women's would be slut shamed for similar behavior. My burgeoning sexuality would unfold as a reaction to these repressive religious orthodoxies, old school notions of sex, sexual status, and trauma. Oh, I lost my virginity at 17 to my boss at a restaurant where I worked. And a year later, I experienced my first sexual trauma. I felt damaged and dirty and blamed myself. Everyone responds different to those situations. I dealt with overwhelming shame by becoming hypersexual and promiscuous. The culture was right there to pick me up and dust me off. I doubled down on being a proud slut and uh, internalized the biggest and most damaging lie that loveless sex is empowering. I basked in the girl power and uh, girl power glow of that delusion for decades, weaponizing my sexuality and convincing myself I was full of the divine feminine. I was full of shit. You kind of still are, you know, given how you went over uh, blatantly ignoring good advice earlier. I told myself that uh, because I could seduce a man, I was powerful. Yeah, because it, it's so hard. It, it's so fucking hard to do that, isn't it? Like, man, so a remotely good-looking woman can go outside, like, in, into a fucking Walgreens and just ask random men to have sex, and I'm quite sure most of them will say yes. But as Perry says in her book, women's can all too easily fail to recognize that being desired is not the same as being held in high esteem. Now, deep down inside, I knew that was the case, but as a defense mechanism, I crafted a man-eater persona. My mantras were rigid. You can either have a career or a relationship, but you can't have both. In general, this, uh, the, I, I mean, career and a relationship you can manage, but if you want a career and a family, you know, chillins gets a lot more difficult. Intimacy is creepy. Motherhood and chillins are a trap. Sex is only about power. So you ignored your own mother, you, you know, mothers and aunts, well-meaning. You ignored all them. You believed this shit. Another set of lies built on lies built on trauma. Sex isn't just about power. It's also about intimacy and vulnerability and trust, things I want nothing to do with. But uh, because implicit in modern dating is a complete lack of expectations, especially those of chivalry. <laughs> of course, we're going to go there again, huh? Okay. How many more times am I going to have to say this? Ladies, if you want a traditional man, which includes things like chivalry, 
You better be a traditional woman. If you are not a traditional woman, you don't deserve a traditional man. You want to talk about expectations? Yours are way too fucking astronomical. And whenever a man wanted to pick up the tab or pull out the chair or open the door or pick me up or take me to dinner or see me during the day or wait longer than the first day to have sex, I was shocked and suspicious. Was he a serial killer? Damn, man, she sounds like just a joy to be around, huh? You know, casual sex is fraught with insecurity, miscommunication, intimacy, and love are punchlines. When a man I slept with had the courtesy to, uh, to reach out, I mistook relief for happiness, uh, re rewiring my brain to be grateful for the bare minimum. The saddest realization is how low I set the bar. And you did it to yourself while ignoring good advice, man. A lifetime of allowing myself to be the other woman, taken for granted or treated like a doormat under the false pretense of being empowered, came to a head one night with the arrival of a text message from an on-again, off-again lover. Yeah, Good night, baby. I love you. It said, quickly followed by, wrong person. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, fuck. Sorry, wrong chat. I meant to propose to the other. Damn. I wonder if he did it on purpose. The rock bottom doesn't always look like losing everything or ending up in jail. Sometimes it can be that sick feeling in your gut when you know emotionally you're done. I wanted to be able to have meaningless sex like a guy, but it didn't work. After years of writing for Playboy, I learned it doesn't work for a lot of men either. For years, I tried unsuccessfully to catch the feels. Uh, even that expression is so telling of the way emotions are viewed regarding relationships, as if they're cold or the flu or some kind of sickness you need to get over. Kind of. Now, you're not entirely wrong about that. I'm not speaking for all whammons. I know many whammons with a solid sense of self who happily have lo have loveless sex. Isn't that who you thought you were up until recently? And this piece won't make them defensive, uh, but a lot of whammons will read this and bristle just like I did. When I used to read something that pushed back on the lie I'd built my entire identity around. All right, so she re finally realizes that she fell for the lie. And she also realizes, yeah, I know you're not going to listen to me either. Yeah, or maybe you're a uh, you're trans or non-binary person reading this thinking, what quaint ideas about gender and sex this old Tradcon has. So a, a, a self-professed feminist is also claiming to be a Tradcon. A self-proclaimed feminist slut that was sleeping around for like 30 years. Now she's a Tradcon all of a sudden, huh? Isn't that how it always works? And to that I say, uh, it makes sense to me that the generation of young whamans who have experienced and borne witness to some of the worst side effects of unyoking sex from consequences and love that Perry Mantikas outlines in her book, rough sex, hookup culture, and ubiquitous porn, would take a look around and decide, I'd rather be a man, or more accurately, I'd rather not be a woman. Meanwhile, dude, men are making out great in this environment. Yeah, men are like, what? You want the male privilege of working yourself to death at my job? By all means, go ahead. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be at home uh, taking advantage of all the tax benefits that are taken from the money you earn. Let's trade places. No, but maybe it's inevitable conclusion to the sexual revolution. Today's youth are being fed an even more dangerous lie than the one I was fed about loveless sex. I was told sex doesn't matter. They're being told biology doesn't matter. Okay, this is probably the, the definitely the smartest thing she said in this article. Uh, I mean, hats off for that. This is a tragedy. I'm not suggesting we return to some Victorian era notion of sex or some 50s era ideal about gender roles. I'm now 43 years old and I'm uh, in the first truly healthy, intimate relationship of my life with my second husband. Okay, I'll give her that. At least she was only married twice. I, I thought it would be a lot higher. We recently had a daughter in the wake of her birth. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about the conversations I'm going to have with her and the conversations I wish I could go back in time and have with the young Bridget. I'd tell her sex can be empowering if you're coming from a position of healthy self-esteem. If you're coming from a place of trauma or insecurity, casual sex won't heal that. In fact, it might set you back and undermine any progress regarding your feelings of self-worth. If you know your value, you're less likely to sleep with someone who doesn't value you. Cherish yourself and you will be cherished. Now, this, this is good advice, but it will be ignored. Uh, you shouldn't have to withhold sex uh, for a man to respect you. He should respect you regardless. The, the, this right here, nah, this, this ain't going to work. He's just going to go with someone else, really. 
No, sexual empowerment has nothing to do with how many people, uh, how many people you do or don't sleep with. As it has to do with how comfortable you are in your skin. No matter your decision, it's not about waiting until you're in love to have sex. It's about making sure that first you love yourself. I can guarantee you, this is one problem that modern women's definitely don't have. They they love the fuck out of themselves way too much. Don't ignore that nagging gut instinct telling you sexual liberation leaves you feeling unfulfilled. Oh, shit. They know. Empower them some more. You can still be sex positive and accept that uh, for you, sex can't be liberated from intimacy in a meaningful relationship. I regret being a slut. I regret it because I regret those men can say they slept with me. Still, that's how I know I finally value myself. Every woman should feel this way. Sleeping with me is a privilege and you have to be worthy. So, so can you imagine that? Like one of these post wall quote unquote trad cons saying, Oh no, nah, man, yeah, you ain't having sex with me, you know, until we get married. Like, well, what about the uh, 300 guys you fucked in the past like two years? Like, oh, oh, that's before I became a trad con. And it's like, no, 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 man, like sleeping with me is a privilege, you have to earn it. Like, nah, I'll, I'll go with this other woman instead. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a little bit too late for this. But, you know, I, I guess to her credit, she was able to find a Captain Savaho. So, you know, maybe things will work out for her. Who knows?